Welcome to Transformers, the podcast about how business people and policymakers are creating a sustainable future. I'm your host, Kai Embren. In today's program, my guest is Svante Axelsson. He is a Swedish national coordinator for Fossil Free Sweden, a governmental initiative that brings together companies, municipalities, regions and organizations that stands behind the declaration that Sweden will be one of the first fossil free nations in the world. Previously, he was general secretary of the Swedish Society of Nature Conservation, a position he held for 16 years. He is a trained agronomist and environmental economist. Welcome, Svante. Thank you. Great to have you here. Yes, so, it's been uh, a nice talk. Yeah, well, uh, your work now is uh, focused to remove uh, obstacles to increase the speed in the transition to meet Sweden's climate target. Yeah. A net zero greenhouse gas emission by 2045. Yes. How, how is it to lead an organization with such a high ambition? It's exciting and easy, will I say. Uh, because the situation now in Sweden that we have a strong support from the from the business and, and the industrial sectors that they will change and uh, go on faster uh, than the politicians. So it's a it's a little special situation that uh, they see more possibilities to to uh, to transform the industry because otherwise they are not in the market. So that uh, unique situation you can say. That now mm. we have the green movements and the environmental movements and the industrial movements that both of them are in hurry. So it's also easier for the politicians to uh, to produce and to take decisions with so strong support mm. from so wide groups in the, in the society. Yeah, that's what's one of my thinking of how is it to lead an organization when you have so much of different types of interest. You have the politicians there, yeah. you have the businesses there. Mm. You have other type of organizations. How how do you reach out to them? It's uh, talk, talk, talk. You can say uh, I, I think sometimes I'm a, like a, te- a dance teacher because we ha- we need to to uh, have a square dance. You can say not only tango. We need a lot of interests that have to move in the same direction, and, and the dance start with with the politicians' decision to be the first climate neutral. Uh, state in the world 2045 so it was a very good start and behind that we have the paris agreements so it was very easy for me to come in in that situation and then we start to uh, produce uh, industrial roadmaps for fossil free competitiveness and it was also very you know, easy to start up that type of work because they see the possibilities and i think yeah. that perhaps the most interesting thing now that we have changed our mindset in our society, especially in Sweden now. We don't talk about burden sharing and costs and all that. We see possibilities, how we can increase our export and how we can transform our industry to that we can uh, deliver solutions for the whole world. So uh, after that, we can say we have uh, the first step from the parliament. The second step in this dance was 22 roadmaps. And they say they will and they can, but they also need more decisions from the parliament. So now we are in the next step to to deliver to the parliament uh, different uh, proposals that they have to take. So in that case, you can see uh, we're working together and I'm running between them. I see. Uh, Well, can you tell us a little bit more about the work? Let's often start with uh, to talk about the targets and the possibilities and the visions. I I always meet people that... uh, uh, stay behind the, the target to be the first fossil free welfare nation, you say. Uh, and that's very easy when you have that's this uh, baseline that we have agreement about that. And then we see how can you be part of this solution? All of them want to be a part of the solution. And, uh, and then we identify obstacles. Uh, what, what can I do for you? Uh, and then we identify three, four. Uh, examples of obstacles and then I go to the parliament and to the department and say here we have three four industries that want to produce bio biodiesel uh, we need some sort of uh, regulation perhaps as we have started now to introduce reduction law and perhaps also some guarantees 
And then we see, ah, it's easier for Prem to, to change the, the direction from the fossil direction to produce much more biodiesel. So it's, uh, it's listen and then said to other people and then also use the newspapers and the, and the media to tell other people that we are now changing our society. And that type of storytelling is very, very important to, to get this moment that many companies also want to be part of this, this moment. So uh, join the winning side, I, I used to say. And I think this psychology perspective is very, very crucial uh, to get a, a positive uh, movement. Do you feel that uh, the, all the political parties in the parliament uh, listen to you? More or less, uh, because I don't talk so very much about the indiv individual perspective, because that's more, more tricky. But when you talk about how, how can we transform the produce more fossil free steel, is, is someone against that? No. How can we change our mind in LKAB to produce fossil iron, fossil free iron? Yes, everyone supporting that. How can we transform biorefineries and produce more biorefinery from the premium? Yeah, cement industry. So when we talk about heavy industrial transformation, I think all parties uh, is, is supporting if these companies in themselves say it's good for them and, and their job and all that. You have a, an office in, in the Swedish government uh, and uh, how many people are working around you? Now it's five persons uh, and we are not in the government because that's very important because I'm not part of the government. And that's, that's good for me because if I want to be a sort of dance teacher, I need to have... Uh, Independency. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I, I, will, I, I will between them. And, and I'm, not, I'm a national coordinator. I'm not the government's uh, coordinator. So that's very important in my role. Yeah, the difference is that you're the government took an initiative, but it's not yeah. the government run no. office. No, so I, I can say uh, uh, strong things and, and I can criticize the government uh, with, with any problem. And, and that's very important for me and for my person. Yeah. And that's all, I think also that is very important to, to be a middleman uh, between this uh, type of actors. Yeah, I see. Well, uh, let us go into some of the areas that I think you have uh, thoughts about. And uh, when we talk about green finance, yeah. and uh, Sweden now has a unique opportunity to demonstrate the world how welfare can improve the going fossil free. Yeah. But you have some challenges in the finance sector. Yeah. How keen are the banks and investors to take part of the work? I have a question when I read reports that Swedish banks invested and have given loans to fossil fuels exploration with up to 100 billion Swedish kroner in the Arctic mm. in the last three years. Mm. That sounds that's, pretty That's, that's not responsible. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's not acceptable, I mean, because uh, I think it's, 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 it's bad for, for the banks in themselves and it's also bad for the whole planet. Uh, I mean, the banks and the institutions don't have really enough information what they're doing with the money. And I think that we have, they have they've not done the, the groundwork, you can say, because it's not beneficial to put money in that type of sectors. So it's, it's I don't think it's a, a big conflict here, but I'm, I'm surprised that they don't really do the, the right job because uh, it's very, very risky to put money in, in fossil uh, industries uh, all over the world now. So I, I, don't, I don't know why they, they put money in, in that type of investments. Particularly when it's uh, under the last three years and we have the Paris Agreement 2015. Yeah. And yeah. you see this type of decision making that uh, will not uh, be something for the future. No. But um, uh, do you have any financing um, sector represented in, in the work you're doing? Uh, not now, but we are starting to produce, after these 22 uh, room maps, we are now starting to produce different strategies because this puzzle of 22 room maps don't fit together. Uh, we need to solve the, the, the conflicts because when we produce or we implement all these 
uh, roadmaps, we, we get problem. For example, uh, lack of biofuel and bi biomass. So now we have produced battery strategy, and uh, last week we produced uh, hydrogen strategy, and then we now, uh, in April, we produce bio strategy and then finance strategy. So now we are starting this finance discussion. Yeah. And I mean, uh, most of these uh, banks and all that, won't, they, won't, they don't want to take risks. So the state have a new role in this transform transformative time. And then we, that's why we're looking for different guarantees and, and carbon uh, contract for difference and all that uh, to see how can the state take a more heavy role in this transformation. Mm. Uh, we had in, in the prog program of Transformers earlier a discussion um, about uh, the Swedish pension fund, the fourth, yeah. the fourth pension fund, who was yeah. one of the first in Sweden who really developed this climate strategy uh, and uh, in already 2007. It must be a lot of things to learn from that period because they, they could show also how investment could be profitable for for the pensioners and, yeah. and also move a lot of thoughts into the financing sector yeah and so so i, I that's why when you see see uh, financing actors uh, invest in in fossil fuel then you start wondering why well, why do they do this yeah uh, why do they do that it's stranded assets mm. uh, in the future yeah so, but maybe we can see something coming out from your work uh, on the financing sector. But let's go further on and, and, and see a little bit into the municipalities. Swedish municipalities have a unique position as change makers because yeah. they're, they are independent by law, giving mm. them the opportunity to drive change. Mm. And the Swedish municipalities are many times far ahead related to Sweden's national climate policies and action. Mm. So let us go into two interesting cases that I have met uh, mm. earlier years. And one is the city of Växjö. They decided to go fossil free with political unity already in 1996 to be mm. fossil free 2030. Mm. And another example is that the capital of Sweden, Stockholm, which has been the wor a world class innovator in inspiration to its membership in the C40 Cities Network both with its climate positive strategy, district heating system, the green bonds investment in a bioenergy power plant, and with its capacity of bio CCS, a carbon capture and storage that could help to meet the Swedish climate target. So what, how do you see the municipality's role in your roadmap? They're very, very important. Uh, I mean, uh, if you look back, you can see that the, the driving forces have been this uh, local municipalities, uh, Växjö, Helsingborg, Uppsala, different cities are in the forefront, have uh, much more ambitious targets than the nation Sweden have. So they are very, very important. And I mean, in two, two perspectives, the first is of course the public procurement. Uh, they, they buy very much things. Uh, and I think that's why we also have started in this fossil free strategy to have six municipalities that we are working very closely together and see how they can, can be uh, more ambitious and how they can use public recruitment in a way that support the transition and imp implementation of the its roadmaps. So public recruitment yeah. is very, very, very strong driving forces uh, in this perspective. The other thing is how we can build up uh, cities that are fossil free and also good for the health and better air quality and all that. So we can see that Oslo, Copenhagen, uh, Freiburg, uh, we will have to, to follow them, uh, how we can build up a very, very um, good society uh, and also uh, without fossil energy. Mm. Uh, well, uh, let's go into another area that I think just now is very hot. Uh, and then when we talk about electrical cars and and mm. fossil free cars or uh, hybrids of different types of models that um, when we've got the figures of uh, the, the global sales of electrical cars accelerate fast in 2020 
rising mm. by 43 percent to more mm. than 3 million. But when you see it's uh, related to how many cars sales are, it's 84 million the last yeah. year. Still yeah. a bit to go. So, yes. But have we reached the tipping point? Yes, I think so. Uh, I mean, this uh, December, 50 percent of all new cars was uh, chargeable. Uh, so, so it's it's uh, surprising very many people that this transition will go so fast. Uh, so I think now now it's all in in this electric uh, lorries and also cars, uh, and that's important because we don't have uh, biofuels for all uh, vehicles all over the world. So uh, I, I'm surprised, and I think it will go much faster than we now think it's, it's possible. We have a country on the side of Sweden, Norway, yes. uh, which has been a change maker and using incentives with strong political leadership. Yeah. What can we learn from Norway? I don't think we need so much subsidies because now the learning curve is going down. So that it's, it's uh, electric cars is rather really cheap if you look at the life cycle perspective. Um, so I, I, don't, I think we have a good position now if we can also produce charging places all over yes. the, the society. So not, not the cost of the car, but in the infrastructure is, is, uh, is a bottleneck just now. And uh, we produced, as I mentioned, uh, this battery strategy, because I think the, the other challenge is to produce more sustainable batteries. They are not sustainable today. Uh, and that's why we also have uh, Northvolt, this giga factory in north of Sweden, and we have mines in Sweden. So we need to have a more fossil free value chain uh, and this will be industrial new sector for Sweden to, to be in the forefront to produce uh, much more sustainable uh, fossil free batteries. Yeah, it's interesting that we talk about batteries because Sweden have two very interesting persons that have been driving the development of batteries yeah. in uh, in Northvolt and, and also working in, in California with Elon Musk. And uh, then you have um, also a woman, uh, Christina Lampe Önerud. Ah, okay, yes. Also yeah. a leading uh, li uh, ion lithium battery developer. Yeah. So two individuals that have been sort of on the world stage yeah in uh, driving uh, the new type of batteries that uh, will support uh, the car electrical industry yeah and i think it's also interesting to see that this northfold factory want to have uh, 50 percent recyclable materials 2030 and we can also see that uh, uh, chalmers university have shown that it's, it's possible to recycle recycle more or less 95 percent of cobalt and lithium in new batteries so i mean the circle economy will be very, very important uh, when you produce more sustainable batteries. Uh, let's uh, talk a little bit more about uh, the construction sector, mm. uh, because it's about uh, it's account for 20 percent of Sweden's climate impact. How do you see this Sweden's strategy to, to develop uh, wood as a raw material for buildings? And uh, do you see that um, we are leading, leading the world's development mm. of this? No, I don't think so. Uh, and it's a difficult question because in the first perspective, you think it's very, very nice to produce more houses and buildings in tree uh, and, and forest. Uh, and then we see, OK, we have not so many, a uh, lot of forest to, to, uh, to use because uh, we have already a uh, lack of, of materials, you can say. So uh, if we say we will double the production of, of uh, of houses uh, with this uh, tree construction, uh, I think uh, it also could be difficult. But we haven't so much in the forest to, to cut down just now. Uh, the the the, the forest is, is rather young, and we have to wait to 2030. We have more of uh, materials that we can use. So uh, mm. Mm, it's it's a, it's a very strong conflict uh, in the in the forest, and we can't. We can't, uh, there are so many interests. Yeah. Um, so that's, uh, I don't mm -hmm. think we will, uh, we don't, but, uh, I, I don't think we will build so very much in, uh, yeah. in this material because yeah. uh, it's difficult to, to get it from the forest now. Yeah, well, I, I understand that it's a 
could be a conflict when we're coming to biodiversity and 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 uh, sort of uh, the interest to to use wood uh, could come from many types of sectors but as i can see also that uh, the nordics are very strong in uh, have this big forest sector with a, yeah. a lot of knowledge and experience yeah how to both develop the sustainable solution for the forest but also develop new products yeah and um, but um, it's also the this type of issues has that been a part of, of the work you're doing yeah of course uh, and uh, it was a conflict in the beginning with the, the cement industry and this forest industry you can say uh, and now they work more closely it's to combine this type of of, of uh, technical uh, solutions so i think the combination of uh, our wood and cement uh, is a very good thing but uh, in the short perspective we have not so lot of timber uh, and uh, if even if the newspaper production is going down we can see that the production of our package will increase very rapidly so so uh, now it's it's uh, it's not so lot of timber even if we have a lot of forest i see but i can understand that it's a different perspective if you live in the nordics and or in italy or yes uh, of course so it must be a different experience of, of how to use uh, the forest yeah for different reasons but yeah. um, an interesting area but another interesting area which is also reflecting on the world market that it's a steel industry yeah and of course in sweden uh, the the steel industry accounts for 11 percent of sweden's emissions mm. and then suddenly we saw a fossil free 2045 hybrid mm -hmm. project yes tell us a little bit about that Yes, it's very, very important and really surprising when the, this LKAB and SSAB and Vattenfall come together and say so they want... Maybe we should say that they are state-owned? Owned, yeah. So that was easier than for others yes. to do that. But it was very, very strong uh, ambition. And uh, all again, we want to be a permanent exhibition for, for fossil-free technology. Uh, we have that as, as a vision in Sweden now. And this was a very concrete example of that to produce the first, first fossil free steel uh, by using hydrogen. So that's, that had been very, very important because that was the starting point uh, when we talk about uh, this green industrialization story. So when, when steel uh, owners say that we want to be fossil free, everyone can follow because that was the most difficult one. Um, so I mean, it has been so important because uh, they have set this uh, style, you can say, to be ambition and to talk about transformation. Is, uh, is that also that is connected to the, the Swedish hydrogen strategy? Uh, because hydrogen is uh, going to be used in, in hybrid instead yeah. of cooking, cooking coal. Yeah. Yes, hydrogen. We have we have just produced one uh, hydrogen strategy, and I think that's that's a, that's a bubble uh, discussion now. Uh, what to talk about hydrogen? What's that, and how can we use it? So it's it's a, a new discussion, a new player on this uh, fossil-free arena, you can say. Uh, and uh, I'm surprised myself because the the price of renew renewable electricity is very low and it's going down and the Electrolyzers is very cheap and will go e even cheaper. We talk about uh, that it can compete with, uh, with natural gas, something 2030. Uh, so that's the price is going down and that make it more competitive. Uh, that's why also different uh, industries now want to use uh, green uh, hydrogen in, in different type of applications. Then if we go to another part of the industry, you can see how you can uh, uh, capture carbon uh, yeah. in, in different uh, solutions. And you have not something that you call bio CCS, yeah. which, um, that you can reduce and get the negative emissions. And um, that is a technology that has been, been working on for many years. And I, I think uh, the first one I saw 
in this direction was in Norway. Yeah. But, um, uh, how do you see the, the BioCCS role in the Swedish strategy? Yes, it's, it's very important uh, because the world needs to, the first, first step is to, to reduce the, the emissions to zero 2050, and then we have to collect uh, CO2 and, and to uh, reduce the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Uh, and uh, then we need to do uh, bio CCS and uh, different other things. Uh, I think it's important for us because we have a lot of uh, heat uh, uh, sectors, uh, heat uh, plants that use biofuel. Uh, and that's why it also could be a, a good conclusion. And even uh, the, the pulp production can use bio CCS. So, uh, Mm. For, a, for a land, a country with so much uh, forest, I think is just uh, BOCCS could be very important to, to reduce emissions. But I also see that we, we want to the, use the emissions before we, we put it perhaps under the, the sea, uh, what you say, sea ground. Mm. So we talk about, uh, uh, what you say, electrofuels, when you combine hydrogen with CO2 and produce methanol. Uh, so I think that also is a very, very interesting industrial sector. Uh, when we have low price on hydrogen and we have the emissions of CO2 from different uh, plants, we can also produce green methanol without using more land. That seems to be interesting discussion within uh, the industry. I mean, uh, the steel production, I think absolutely we are in the front. I think also the biorefineries is rather uh, on the edge. I don't think we are in the edge, on the edge when you talk about circle economy as a whole. I think uh, Holland and other countries have more concrete and good examples in that, uh, in that sector. So uh, now we have touched by some of the, the, the key program that you are developing within uh, your fossil free uh, strategy and uh, and we looking into um, uh, December and we have the COP26. How do you see Sweden's climate strategy on the international level? Mm -hmm. um, Sweden also got to contribute with what they call the NDCs. Uh, yeah, how you accelerate your work uh, related to the climate agreement in Paris. Mm -hmm. Uh, how do you see Sweden's role in front of COP26? Mm. I think the most important role we have is to be a good example, because uh, we still have the discussion in this uh, climate negotiation process. They talk about burden sharing, cost and, and different uh, problems. And I mean, we have changed our mindset now. Sweden want to be at the forefront, want to be climate neutral before other, other countries not for paining uh, the, the, the people in Sweden. Instead, we think that it's good for the competitiveness, it's good for the job, it's good for the growth. Uh, and and uh, Stefan Löfven, our minister uh, of the state, say that we can't uh, um, have, we want to have money for, for the welfare system if we don't are fossil free. So, I mean, the discussion now in Sweden is to say to other countries, just go on and and step up and uh, it's good for your country. So, I mean, the negotiation process, don't, I don't think that it will solve the, the climate uh, crisis. Uh, I mean, I think it's good system. We talk about transformation of money and all of that, but the ambition is, is it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not ambitious enough. And I think we have to, to change. If, is it really so, so difficult when it, as it was for two, 20 years ago? I don't think so. So I think the message from Sweden is we want to be fossil free now and we will step up and, and speed up the tempo because otherwise we don't have this good welfare system uh, in the long run. No, and then you also have uh, Greta Thunberg and the young generation yeah. pushing for solutions. Yeah. Which role do you think she can play on the international? She already play in the yeah, yeah, so agenda. Play, yeah. yeah. But, um, how do you see that this young Swede who comes up yeah. and, and leading this uh, mobilizing mm. organizations around the world? Yeah, I'm of course very impressed of what, have, what she have done. 
uh, and you can say in 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 more economic way, she, she the, the willingness to to pay for solutions is increasing by Greta, because uh, we know more uh, how how acute the situation is, and that that's a market for for steel production and for for electric cars and all that. So Greta has helped the market. Uh, to, to, to sell these uh, sometimes more expensive uh, products. In other way, you can say, I don't think the solutions that she comes with is so uh, good uh, uh, always. Because I think uh, she uh, she not uh, accept biomass, uh, she are against growth and so on. I think hmm, it's not always uh, correct, I mean. Because we can see that we can produce uh, more sustainable biomass and biofuels instead of oil, and we can also uh, create jobs and even growth uh, by producing fossil-free steel and and solutions. Uh, so I mean, she is very very strong in how she explains the problems, but I don't, I don't think she is so strong when you talk about solutions. Well, uh, that's. Uh, going to be the last word from you in in uh, in our program today, Svante, and yeah. uh, I hope uh, to see you on the international stage uh, also further on, uh, particularly to articulate the Swedish um, fossil-free strategy mm. uh, in front of Glasgow in December. Yeah, thank you very much, Svante. Thank you for being invited to this interesting talk. I'm Kai Embren. Follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn, where I will be announcing the future guests to this podcast. And you can expect about two programs a month. And each guest has a unique story of making business and society sustainable. So find out more. Visit my homepage, kaiembren.org. Thank you for listening.